Alphabet An alphabet is a standard set of letters, basic written symbols or graphemes, that represent the phonemes, basic significant sounds, of any spoken language it is used to write. This is in contrast to other types of writing systems, such as syllabaries, in which each character represents a syllable, and logographic systems, in which each character represents a word, morpheme, or semantic unit. The first fully phonemic script, the Proto-Canaanite script, later known as the Phoenician alphabet, is considered to be the first alphabet, and is the ancestor of most modern alphabets, including Arabic, Greek, Latin, Cyrillic, Hebrew, and possibly Brahmic. Peter T. Daniels, however, distinguishes an Avagita or alpha syllabary, a set of graphemes that represent consonantal base letters which diacritics modify to represent vowels, as in Devanagari and other South Asian scripts, an abjad, in which letters predominantly or exclusively represent consonants, as in the original Phoenician, Hebrew or Arabic, and an alphabet, a set of graphemes that represent both vowels and consonants. In this narrow sense of the word, the first true alphabet was the Greek alphabet, which was developed on the basis of the earlier Phoenician alphabet. Of the dozens of alphabets in use today, the most popular is the Latin alphabet, which was derived from the Greek, and which many languages modify by adding letters for measuring diacritical marks. While most alphabets have letters composed of lines, linear writing, there are also exceptions such as the alphabets used in Braille. The Khmer alphabet, for Cambodian, is the longest, with 74 letters. Alphabets are usually associated with a standard ordering of letters. This makes them useful for purposes of collation, specifically by allowing words to be sorted in alphabetical order. It also means that their letters can be used as an alternative method of numbering ordered items, in such contexts as numbered lists and number placements. The English word alphabet came into Middle English from the late Latin word alphabetum, which in turn originated in the Greek lambda phi beta eta tau omicron sigma, alphabetos. The Greek word was made from the first two letters, alpha, alpha and beta, beta. The names for the Greek letters came from the first two letters of the Phoenician alphabet, aleph, which also meant ox, and bet, which also meant house. Sometimes, like in the alphabet song in English, the term ABCs is used instead of the word alphabet, now I know my ABCs. Knowing one's ABCs, in general, can be used as a metaphor for knowing the basics about anything. The history of the alphabet started in ancient Egypt. Egyptian writing had a set of some 24 hieroglyphs that are called uniliterals, to represent syllables that begin with a single consonant of their language, plus a vowel, or no vowel, to be supplied by the native speaker. These glyphs were used as pronunciation guides for logograms, to write grammatical inflections, and, later, to transcribe loanwords and foreign names. In the Middle Bronze Age, an apparently alphabetic system known as the Proto Sinaitic script appears in Egyptian turquoise mines in the Sinai Peninsula dated to circa the 15th century BC, apparently left by Canaanite workers. In 1999, John and Deborah Darnell discovered an even earlier version of this first alphabet at Wadi El Hol dated to circa 1800 BC and showing evidence of having been adapted from specific forms of Egyptian hieroglyphs that could be dated to circa 2000 BC, strongly suggesting that the first alphabet had been developed about that time. Based on letter appearances and names, it is believed to be based on Egyptian hieroglyphs. This script had no characters representing vowels, although originally it probably was a syllabary, but unneeded symbols were discarded. An alphabetic cuneiform script with 30 signs including three that indicate the following vowel was invented in Ugarit before the 15th century BC. This script was not used after the destruction of Ugarit. The Proto-Sinaitic script eventually developed into the Phoenician alphabet, which is conventionally called Proto-Canaanite before ca. 1050 BC. The oldest text in Phoenician script is an inscription on the sarcophagus of King Ahiram. This script is the parent script of all Western alphabets. By the 10th century, two other forms can be distinguished, namely Canaanite and Aramaic. The Aramaic gave rise to the Hebrew script. The South Arabian alphabet, a sister script to the Phoenician alphabet, is the script from which the Geez alphabet, Anabagita, is descended. Vowelless alphabets, which are not true alphabets, are called abjads currently exemplified in scripts including Arabic, Hebrew, and Syriac. The omission of vowels was not always a satisfactory solution and some weak consonants are sometimes used to indicate the vowel quality of a syllable, midders lectionis. These letters have a dual function since they are also used as pure consonants. 
scripts. The Proto-Sinaitic or Proto-Canaanite script and the Ugaritic script were the first scripts with a limited number of signs, in contrast to the other widely used writing systems aft time, cuneiform, Egyptian hieroglyphs, and linear B. The Phoenician script was probably the first phonemic script and it contained only about two dozen distinct letters, making it a script simple enough for common traders to learn. Another advantage of Phoenician was that it could be used to write down many different languages, since it recorded words phonemically. The script was spread by the Phoenicians across the Mediterranean. In Greece, the script was modified to add vowels, giving rise to the ancestor of all alphabets in the West. The vowels have independent letter forms separate from those of consonants, therefore it was the first true alphabet. The Greeks chose letters representing sounds that did no text in Greek to represent vowels. Vowels are significant in the Greek language, and the syllabic linear B script that was used by the Mycenaean Greeks from the 16th century BC had 87 symbols, including five vowels. In its early years, there were many variants of the Greek alphabet, a situation that caused many different alphabets to evolve from it. The Greek alphabet, in its UB in form, was carried over by Greek colonists to the Italian peninsula where it gave rise to a variety of alphabets used to write the Italic languages. One of these became the Latin alphabet, which was spread across Europe as the Romans expanded their empire. Even after the fall of the Roman state, the alphabet survived in intellectual and religious works. It eventually became used for the descendant languages of Latin, the Romance languages, and then for most of the other languages of Europe. Some adaptations of the Latin alphabet are augmented with ligatures, such as Ash in Danish and Icelandic and in Algonquian, by borrowings from other alphabets, such as the Thorn Thorn in Old English and Icelandic, which came from the Fudark runes, and by modifying existing letters, such as the Etheth of Old English and Icelandic, which is a modified D. Other alphabets only use a subset of the Latin alphabet, such as Hawaiian, and Italian, which uses the letters J, K, X. Y and W only in foreign words. Another notable script is Elder Futark, which is believed to have evolved out of one of the old Italic alphabets. Elder Futark gave rise to a variety of alphabets known collectively as the runic alphabets. The runic alphabets were used for Germanic languages from AD 100 to the late Middle Ages. Its usage is mostly restricted to engravings on stone and jewelry, although inscriptions have also been found on bone and wood. These alphabets have since been replaced with the Latin alphabet, except for decorative usage for which the runesh remained in use until the 20th century. The Old Hungarian script is a contemporary writing system of the Hungarians. It was in use during the entire history of Hungary, albeit not as an official writing system. From the 19th century, it once again became more and more popular. The Glagolitic alphabet was the initial script of the liturgical language Old Church Slavonic and became, together with the Greek Unzeal script, the basis of the Cyrillic script. Cyrillic is one of the most widely used modern alphabetic scripts, and is notable for its use in Slavic languages and also for other languages within the former Soviet Union. Cyrillic alphabets include the Serbian, Macedonian, Bulgarian, Russian, Belarusian, and Ukrainian. The Glagolitic alphabet is believed to have been created by Saint Cyril and Methodius, while the Cyrillic alphabet was invented by Clement of Orit, who was their disciple. They feature many letters that appear to have been borrowed from or influenced by the Greek alphabet and the Hebrew alphabet. The longest European alphabet is the Latin-derived Slovak alphabet which has 46 letters. Beyond the logographic Chinese writing, many phonetic scripts are in existence in Asia. The Arabic alphabet, Hebrew alphabet, Syriac alphabet, and other abjads of the Middle East are developments of the Aramaic alphabet, but because these writing systems are largely consonant-based they are often not considered true alphabets. Most alphabetic scripts of India and Eastern Asia are descended from the Brahmi script, which is often believed to be a descendant of Aramaic. In Korea, the Hangul alphabet was created by Sejong the Great. Hangul is a unique alphabet, it is a featural alphabet, where many of the letters are designed from a sound's place of articulation. P to look like the widened mouth, L to look like the tongue pulled in, etc., its design was planned by the government of the day, and it places individual letters and syllable clusters with equal dimensions, in the same way as Chinese characters, to allow for mixed script writing, one syllable always takes up one type space no matter how many letters get stacked into building that one sound block. Uyin, sometimes called Bapamofo, is a semi-syllabary used to phonetically transcribe Mandarin Chinese in the Republic of China. 
After the later establishment of the People's Republic of China and its adoption of Hanyu Pinyin, the use of Uyun today is limited, but it is still widely used in Taiwan where the Republic of China still governs. Uyun developed out of a form of Chinese shorthand based on Chinese characters in the early 1900s and has elements of both an alphabet and a syllabary. Like an alphabet, the phonemes of syllable initials are represented by individual symbols, but like a syllabary, the phonemes of the syllable finals are not. Rather, each possible final, excluding the medial glide, is represented by its own symbol. For example, Luan is represented as Luan, where the last symbol represents the entire final an. While Uyun is not used as a mainstream writing system, it is still often used in ways similar to a romanization system, that is, for aiding in pronunciation on as an input method for Chinese characters on computers and cell phones. European alphabets, especially Latin and Cyrillic, have been adapted for many languages of Asia. Arabic is also widely used, sometimes as an abjad, as with Urdu and Persian and sometimes as a complete alphabet, as with Kurdish and Uyghur. The term alphabet is used by linguists and paleographers in both a wide and a narrow sense. In the wider sense, an alphabet is a script that is segmental at the phoneme level, that is, it has separate glyphs for individual sounds and not for larger units such as syllables or words. In the narrower sense, some scholars distinguish true alphabets from two other types of segmental script, abjads and abugidas. These three differ from each other in the way they treat vowels. Abjads have letters for consonants and leave most vowels unexpressed. Abugidas are also consonant-based, but indicate vowels with diacritics to or a systematic graphic modification of the consonants. In alphabets in the narrow sense, on the other hand, consonants and vowels are written as independent letters. The earliest known alphabet in the wider sense is the Wadi al whole script, believed to be an abjad, which through its successor Phoenician is the ancestor of modern alphabets, including Arabic, Greek, Latin, via the Old Italic alphabet, Cyrillic, via the Greek alphabet, and Hebrew, via Aramaic. Examples of present-day abjads are the Arabic and Hebrew scripts, true alphabets include Latin, Cyrillic, and Korean Hangul, and abugidas are used to write to Grinya. Amharic, Hindi, and Thai. The Canadian Aboriginal syllabics are also an abugida rather than a syllabary as their name would imply, since each glyph stands for a consonant that is modified by rotation to represent the following vowel. In a true syllabary, each consonant vowel combination would be represented by a separate glyph. All three types may be augmented with syllabic glyphs. Ugaritic, for example, is basically an abjad, but has syllabic letters for these are the only time vowels are indicated. Cyrillic is basically a true alphabet, but has syllabic letters for. Coptic has a letter for. Devanagari is typically an abagita augmented with dedicated letters for initial vowels, though some traditions use as a zero consonant as the graphic base for such vowels. The boundaries between the three types of segmental scripts are not always clear cut. For example, Sorani Kurdish is written in the Arabic script, which is normally an abjada, however. In Kurdish, writing the vowels is mandatory, and full letters are used, so the script is a true alphabet. Other languages may use a Semitic abjad with mandatory vowel diacritics, effectively making them abugidas. On the other hand, the Fagspa script of the Mongol Empire was based closely on the Tibetan abugida, but all vowel marks were written after the preceding consonant rather than as diacritic marks. Although short A was not written, as in the Indic abugidas, one could argue that the linear arrangement made this a true alphabet. Conversely, the vowel marks of the Tigrinya abagida and the Amharic abagida, ironically, the original source of the term abagida, have been so completely assimilated into their consonants that the modifications are no longer systematic and have to be learned as a syllabary rather than as a segmental script. Even more extreme, the Pahlavi abjad eventually became logographic. See below. Thus the primary classification of alphabets reflects how they treat vowels. For tonal languages, further classification can be based on their treatment of tone, though names do not yet exist to distinguish the various types. Some alphabets disregard tone entirely, especially when it does not carry a heavy functional load, as in Somali and many other languages of Africa and the Americas. Such scripts are to tone what abjads are to vowels. Most commonly, tones are indicated with diacritics the way vowels are treated in abugidas. This is the case for Vietnamese, a true alphabet, and Thai, an abugida. In Thai, tone is determined primarily by the choice of consonant, with diacritics for disambiguation. In the Pollard script, an abugida, v, 
vowels are indicated by diacritics, but the placement of the diacritic relative to the consonant is modified to indicate the tone. More rarely, a script may have separate letters for tones, as is the case for Meng and Zhuang. For most of these scripts, regardless of whether letters or diacritics are used, the most common tone is not marked, just as the most common vowel is not marked in Indica Bugidas, in Uyu not only is one of the tones unmarked, but there is a diacritic to indicate lack of tone, like the Varama of Indic. The number of letters in an alphabet can be quite small. The book Pallavi script, an Abjad, had only 12 letters at one point, and may have had even fewer later on. Today, the Rotokas alphabet has only 12 letters. The Hawaiian alphabet is sometimes claimed to be as small, but it actually consists of 18 letters, including the Okina and five long vowels. However, Hawaiian Braille has only 13 letters, while Rotokas has a small alphabet because it has few phonemes to represent, just 11. Book Pahlavi was small because many letters had been conflated, that is, the graphic distinctions had been lost over time and diacritics were not developed to compensate for this as they were in Arabic, another script that lost many of its distinct letter shapes. For example, a comma-shaped letter represented G, D, Y, K, or J. However, such apparent simplifications can perversely make a script more complicated. In later Pahlavi Papyri, up to half of the remaining graphic distinctions of these 12 letters were lost, and the script could no longer be read as a sequence of letters at all but instead each word had to be learned as a whole, that is, they had become logograms as an Egyptian demotic. The largest segmental script is probably in Avagita, Devanagari. When written in Devanagari, Vedic Sanskrit has an alphabet of 53 letters, including the Visarga mark for final aspiration and special letters for KS and JN, though one of the letters is theoretical and not actually used. The Hindi alphabet must represent both Sanskrit and modern vocabulary, and so has been expanded to 58 with the Kutma letters, letters with a dot added, to represent sounds from Persian and English. Thai has a total of 59 symbols, consisting of 44 consonants, 13 vowels and 2 syllabics, not including 4 diacritics for tone marks and 1 for vowel length. The largest known abjad is Sindhi, with 51 letters. The largest alphabets in the narrow sense include Kabardian and Abkhaz, for Cyrillic, with 58 and 56 letters, respectively, and Slovak, for the Latin script, with 46. However, these scripts either count the and trigraphs as separate letters, as Spanish did with CH and LL until recently, or uses diacritics like Slovak C. The Georgian alphabet, is alphabetical writing system. It is the largest true alphabet where each letter is graphically independent with 33 letters. Original Georgian alphabet had 38 letters but 5 letters were removed in 19th century by Ilya Chavchevaje. The Georgian alphabet is much closer to Greek than the other Caucasian alphabets. The numeric value runs parallel to the Greek one. The consonants without a Greek equivalent are organized at the end of the alphabet. Origins of the alphabet are still unknown. Some Armenian and Western scholars believe it was created by Mesrop Mashtits, Armenian, Mesrop Mastic also known as Mesrop the Vardabed, who was an early medieval Armenian linguist, theologian, statesman and hymnologist, best known for inventing the Armenian alphabet circa 405 AD. Other Georgian and Western, scholars are against this theory. Syllabaries typically contain 50 to 400 glyphs and the glyphs of logographic systems typically number from the many hundreds into the thousands. Thus a simple count of the number of distinct symbols is an important clue to the nature of an unknown script. The Armenian alphabet, or comma is a graphically unique alphabetical writing system that has been used to write the Armenian language. It was introduced by Misrab Mashtots around 405 AD, an Armenian linguist and ecclesiastical leader, and originally contained 36 letters. Two more letters, O, and, F were added in the Middle Ages. During the 1920s orthography reform, a new letter, capital, was added, which was a ligature before plus, while the letter was discarded and reintroduced as a new letter, which was a digraph before. The Armenian word for alphabet is, named after the first two letters of the Armenian alphabet Abe and Ben. The Armenian script's directionality is horizontal left to right, like the Latin and Greek alphabets. Alphabets often come to be associated with a standard ordering of their letters, which can then be used for purposes of collation, namely for the listing of words and other items in what is called alphabetical order. The basic ordering of the Latin alphabet, ab def gauk which is derived from the Northwest Semitic of God order, is well established, 
Although languages using this alphabet have different conventions for their treatment of modified letters, such as the French E, A, and O, and of certain combinations of letters, multigraphs. In French, these are not considered to be additional letters for the purpose of collation. However, in Icelandic, the accented letters such as A, E, and O are considered distinct letters representing different vowel sounds from the sounds represented by their unaccented counterparts. In Spanish, N tilde is considered a separate letter, but accented vowels such as ND are not. The LL and CH were also considered single letters, but in 1994 the Real Academia Española changed the collating order so that LL is between LK and LM in the dictionary and CH is between CG and C. And in 2010 the 10th Congress of the Association of Spanish Language Academies changed it so they were no longer letters at all. In German, words starting with SCH, which spells the German phoneme, are inserted between words with initial SCA and SI, all incidentally loanwords, instead of appearing after initial SC, as though it were a single letter, in contrast to several languages such as Albanian, in which DH, E diaresis, GJ, LL, RR, TH. X H and C H, all representing phonemes and considered separate single letters, would follow the letters D, E, G, L, N, R, T, X and Z respectively, as well as Hungarian and Welsh. Further, German words with umlaut are collated ignoring the umlaut, contrary to Turkish that adopted the grapheme so and u diaresis, and where a word like tufek would come after tus in the dictionary. An exception is the German telephone directory where umlauts are sorted like a diaresis equals a since names as Jäger appear also with the spelling Jäger, and are not distinguished in the spoken language. The Danish and Norwegian alphabets end with ash, o, a ring, whereas the Swedish and Finnish ones conventionally put a ring, a diaresis, o at the end. It is unknown whether the earliest alphabets had a defined sequence. Some alphabets today, such as the Hananu script, are learned one letter at a time, in no particular order, and are not used for collation where a definite order is required. However, a dozen Igaritic tablets from the 14th century BC preserve the alphabet in two sequences. One, the Abked order later used in Phoenician, has continued with minor changes in Hebrew, Greek, Armenian, Gothic, Cyrillic, and Latin. The other, HMHLQ, was used in Southern Arabia and is preserved today in Ethiopic. Both orders have therefore been stable for at least 3,000 years. Rune accused an unrelated Futark sequence, which was later simplified. Arabic accuses its own sequence, although Arabic retains the traditional Abjadi order for numbering. The Brahmic family of alphabets used in India use a unique order based on phonology. The letters are arranged according to how and where they are produced in the mouth. This organization is used in Southeast Asia, Tibet, Korean Hangul, and even Japanese Kana which is not an alphabet. The Phoenician letter names, in which each letter was associated with a word that begins with that sound, acrophony, continued to be used to varying degrees in Samaritan, Aramaic, Syriac, Hebrew, Greek, and Arabic. The names were abandoned in Latin, which instead referred to the letters by adding a vowel, usually e, before or after the consonant, the two exceptions were y and c, which were borrowed from the Greek alphabet rather than Etruscan and were known as y Greica greek y pronounced i Greica greek i and zeta from greek this discrepancy was inherited by many european languages as in the term z for z in all forms of english other than american english over time names sometimes shifted or were added as in w for w double v in french the english name for y and american z for z comparing names in english and french gives a clear reflection of the great vowel shift a b c and d are pronounced slash a by c d slash in today's english but in contemporary french they are slash a b say d slash the french names from which the english names are derived preserve the qualities of the english vowels from before the great vowel shift by contrast the names of f l m n and s slash f l m n s slash remain the same in both languages because short vowels were largely unaffected by the shift in Cyrillic originally the letters were given names based on Slavic words, this was later abandoned as well in favor of a system similar to that used in Latin. When an alphabet is adopted or developed to represent a given language, an orthography generally comes into being, providing rules for the spelling of words in that language. In accordance with the principle on which alphabets are based, these rules will generally map letters of the alphabet to the phonemes, 
significant sounds, of the spoken language. In a perfectly phonemic orthography there would be a consistent one-to-one -one correspondence between the letters and the phonemes, so that a writer could predict the spelling of a word given its pronunciation, and a speaker would always know the pronunciation of a word given its spelling, and vice versa. However this ideal is not usually achieved in practice, some languages, such as Spanish and Finnish, come close to it, while others, such as English, deviate from it to a much larger degree. The pronunciation of a language often evolves independently of its writing system, and writing systems have been borrowed for languages they were not designed for, so the degree to which letters of an alphabet correspond to phonemes of a language varies greatly from one language to another and even within a single language. Languages may fail to achieve a one-to-one -one correspondence between letters and sounds in any of several ways. National languages sometimes elect to address the problem of dialects by simply associating the alphabet with the national standard. Some national languages like Finnish, Turkish, Russian, Serbo-Croatian, Serbian, Croatian and Bosnian, and Bulgarian have a very regular spelling system with a nearly one-to-one -one correspondence between letters and phonemes. Strictly speaking, these national languages lack a word corresponding to the verb to spell, meaning to split a word into its letters, the closest match being a verb meaning to split a word into its syllables. Similarly, the Italian verb corresponding to spell, out, competere, is unknown to many Italians because spelling is usually trivial, as Italian spelling is highly phonemic. In standard Spanish, one can tell the pronunciation of a word from its spelling, but not vice versa as certain phonemes can be represented in more than one way, but a given letter is consistently pronounced. French, with its silent letters and its heavy use of nasal vowels and elision, may seem to lack much correspondence between spelling and pronunciation, but its rules on pronunciation, though complex, are actually consistent and predictable with a fair degree of accuracy. At the other extreme are languages such as English, where the pronunciations of many words simply have to be memorized as they do not correspond to the spelling in a consistent way. For English, this is partly because the great vowel shift occurred after the orthography was established, and because English has acquired a large number of loan words at different times, retaining their original spelling at varying levels. Even English has general, albeit complex, rules that predict pronunciation from spelling, and these rules are successful most of the time. Rules to predict spelling from the pronunciation have a higher failure rate. Sometimes, countries have the written language undergo a spelling reform to realign the writing with the contemporary spoken language. These can range from simple spelling changes and word forms to switching the entire writing system itself, as when Turkey switched from the Arabic alphabet to a Latin based Turkish alphabet. The standard system of symbols used by linguists to represent sounds in any language, independently of orthography, is called the International Phonetic Alphabet. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.